Hello everyone! Welcome back to more The Dwarves. Let's explore this camp before we move on. Ugh. You're overcome by the urge to vomit. You have of course heard the stories, but seeing with your own eyes that orcs actually do eat humans is a long way from just reading about it. This is the place! I knew it was here! Come on uh -oh. then, find that stupid necklace! Hey, Fuska! In front of you! <laughs> A grounding! Perfect for a spot of breakfast! The... The voice... <laughs> there seems a little, a little weird. A little maybe not finished or something? I don't know. Well, we're here now. You know that you're no warrior. But you want to face the orcs as a child of the Divine Smith. Perhaps you'll manage to kill at least one of them, so as not to appear so undwarven in Varakas's eyes. I'll give you something to chew on. Varakas made us of stone. Well... Okay, now we have a problem. Oink, oink, little peggies! <laughs> okay. All right, so here's an actual dwarf. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, that's pretty sweet. Hi, Barrow and Speared. How did you manage to lose your weapon? Go and get it, and this time, hold it tight. Hey, that one was mine. You're just too slow, dear brother. Too slow? Just wait. We have help? Kill all attackers. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, we have to actually use the talisman of protection. Okay. We got the blow. What is it? You have the leap. Multitude of blows rains down on enemies yes. in front. Mighty blow. Pushes back all enemies surrounding him with a chance of knocking him down. Whew. Okay. Well, and this dude sounds now? the coolest. Huh? Yeah. Just massacre them. Uh huh? Yeah. Another one bites the dust. Yes. Whoo! All right, you need to, you need to get out of here, buddy. Yes. And what now? Uh huh? I can't do that yet. Easy. Understood. Ooh. End it. Huh? Huh? On my way. As good as done. Huh? On my way. Holy crap! Another oh, one bites the dust. Give me a hand. And what? Oh, easy. Yes. Another one what bites the dust. Dude. Yes? All right. No! We lost hard. the door. On my way. I need help over Can here. Can we res him? Quickly. Huh? Yeah. On my way. What is it? As good as done. It can't end like this. Holy crap. That's... Harder than I thought it would be for like a first proper encounter. Yes. Hmm. Well, let's try and get into maybe like a more narrow gap At over once. here. Huh? And what now? What is it? Kill. Huh? Yeah. Huh? What is it? All right. Wild creature. Try and fight like back to back. Uh huh? Yeah. Yes. As good as done. 
Say goodbye forever. Ow! I'm not now. Dust. Huh? He's way to Please wait a moment. Oh boy. What is it? Huh? On my way. Yeah. As good as done. Who's next? Too easy. Jump. Ow! Hey! What is it? Damn you, jump! Yes. <laughs> Stop using that skill so I can jump, bitch. Leave. Uh huh? Yeah! I'm away. Huh? Yes? Alright. What is it? I'll do nothing for you. Yeah! Ow! Another one bites huh? the dust. Yes? Huh? He hardly Whoa. put up a fight. Yeah! Too easy! Yeah. I'm with you! Huh? Understood. <laughs> yes? This guy seems to be really tanky, so you just keep doing what huh? you're doing. I know that this archer is fighting us, shooting us from somewhere over there, I guess. Yeah. On my way. Huh? Okay. As good as done! You keep huh? doing that? Understood. Yeah. And what now? What is it? On my way. Vile creature. Huh? Jump yes. in. Understood. Ah, how? Yeah. I know yeah. what's the dust. What is it? Ha <laughs> ha. There we go. And what how now? Attack. Ah. Huh? Huh? Who's next? Yes? Are you done with your combatants? Okay, On my go over way. there. All right. As good as that seems done. to work. Say goodbye oh. forever. Understood. He hardly put up a fight. Yeah. And what now? Go over All there. Right. Huh? Yeah. What is it? As good as done. You're gonna flank him. And what now? Jump on the other side of them. Yes? On my way! Ah! He hardly put up a fight! Who's next? As good as done! Alright, now go up there, I guess. Huh? What is yes. it? At once. End ah. it. Huh? Who's next? On my way. Whoo! Alright, that is a little more intense than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oink, oink. That's all? No more orcs? Well fought, young friend. Do you happen to be tongue dill? Well fought? But he fought like a... Like a... Boing deal, what do you expect? He grew up amongst the humans. Who? Who are you and how do you know my name? My name is Boendal Hookhand of the Clan of the Swinging Axes. This is my brother, Boindeal Doubleblade. We've been sent to find you. Call me our heart. Are there any more piggy snouts around here? Um. There was a meeting last night. The Elfar serve a certain Nod On who calls himself Lord of the Perish Land. They have enlisted three orc hordes to cause unrest in the south. Did you hear that, Boendal? Peggy snouts! The Elfar from San Balzur and the orcs from Taborabor are working together? And could ally with the orcs from the Perish Land. The twins look at you solemnly. You all know what that would mean for the people of Girdelgard. You turned up at just the right moment. But are you sure it's me you're looking for? The High King Gundrabor sent us to fetch you and bring you to Ogre's death in the Secondling Realm in the South. Really? So he received the letter from my master. And am I a Secondling? Well, something like that, I guess. We've got to... Yeah, 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 I know what you're gonna say. But it's our duty to get you to the Ogre's Death Fortress in one piece. I thought the duty of dwarves was to protect the innocent in Girdelgard. Lot Yonan and King Brauron will take care of the orcs. We three must be careful. You're not exactly a warrior. But he has broad shoulders and broad hands. There's hope for him yet. 
So when you've got the chance to split a few orc skulls, you should take it. Yeah, I think we at least gotta do that. I would be happy to follow you into the realm of the Second Links. In truth, there is nothing I would rather do. But first, I must travel to Black Saddle and return some things to a former Famulus of Lot Yonan. Black Saddle isn't exactly on our way. It's on my way. We can head south as soon as I've carried out Lot Yonan's orders. Well, <laughs> he certainly got the stubbornness of a dwarf. <laughs> Perhaps we'll be able to make a real dwarf of him on the way. All right, we'll accompany you. The sooner we find that Famulus, the quicker we can get back to the mountains. I'll have to send Lot Yonan a message by Carrier Pigeon on the way. And if we happen to stumble upon a couple of orcs... I like you, but we'll have to find you another name. Bolifar. It's about as good as Lipsmith, Paddletosh, or Blufflegrump. It is stupid, senseless, and definitely not a name of honor. What are you good at? <laughs> I'm good at reading. Reading? <laughs> You're a scholar? Hey, now. Nothing wrong with reading. Level. Oh. The force of Tunkil's actions and attacks is raised significantly for a short time. For three seconds? Or is that the activation time? Only three seconds, really? Oh, that wasn't even... Anyway. Uh, let's see. Sweep. Sweep's enemy off his feet. Dealing damage to several enemies and knocking them sideways. Hmm. Seems like control is going to be a big thing in this. Knocking people into things, off of things. Hmm. If we knock them off his feet, they take more damage, right? Because that's considered like a, a stun state. I like this, though. Although I am kind of curious. We've seen this blow before. So I'm kind of curious how this is. Okay, we got... Oh, we got some stuff. You found 24 provisions, some money. 10% chance to regenerate 10% health during a successful attack. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. 10% chance to get 10% health. Ugh, well, hey, it's better than nothing. Is nine like our relations with good water? We have ten relations with these two. So we can have one accessory. Okay. So then let's give you this one. And is this an item or an accessory? I'm assuming it's a one time use. I'm assuming, because it's only 100 gold, and if this was like something that would give you strength throughout the entire game, potentially, like it just becomes a usable item over and over again, then um, I would think that would be worth a lot more. Alright, so his relationship's 45. I wonder how high he can get. Uh, health, 3,500 with one injury. We have five injuries on Bonduil, and three on us. Okay. What is this? King's Cav. Orcord. Hmm. Do we want to fight Orcord? So I think we would still have a couple injuries on Bondwheel. Yeah, we have two on you. The other injuries are okay. Hmm. What's your passive? Deals huge amounts of damage for a short period of time, but can't be controlled anymore. Okay. Yeah, I think we saw that proccing. What was yours? Never loses more than 5% of his maximum health at a stroke? That seems pretty sweet. So he's able to tank, like, giant creatures, probably. 
Because no matter what, they can't go. That's cool. Uh, let's fight this orc horde later. Maybe when our entrance are. There are dead are... orcs lying in the defensive trenches and strewn over the meadows in front of the city. Some of the locals are busy throwing the bodies on pyres, while others repair the minor damage done to the city wall. Huh. The orc horde was here. I'm guessing that's why we got this dialogue because there was a battle. You enter the city and the garrison at its center without being spoken to. It is only when you reach a heavy oak door that leads, you assume, to the commanding officer's headquarters, that you are halted by a guard. Dwarves, eh? Seems we aren't to be spared anything these days. What do you want? <laughs> it looks like you've got an orc problem. Had. Our scouts detected the army early on, and we were able to repel them without any great losses. A small army of orcs like that couldn't breach our mighty walls. <laughs> Your mighty walls look like they're about to collapse under their own weight! The soldier isn't intimidated by Boindil. He juts his chin out confidently. At least they stopped the orcs, unlike your dwarven walls in the north. Huh. Hmm. Do we want to speak to the commander? I must sure. speak with your commander. Commander oh. Valor yeah, doesn't arms, have yeah. time. He's still very busy dealing with the aftermath of the orc attack. This is kind of a big deal. Commander Valor is dealing with the orc problem, and I have important information concerning it. I witnessed a meeting of the orc lords. The guard eyes you with interest and tries to judge whether you can be trusted. Finally, he stands up, opens a door, and enters the room ahead of you. The commander looks up from his work. The guard repeats what you told him. Your information about the orcs could be useful. We have fought them back, but not yet defeated them. Come in. The commander listens attentively, and now and then asks questions, as you tell him about the three orc armies and the meeting of the chieftains with the Alf Syntharas. This sounds very grave. I will send out messengers. We must be prepared. Hey, all right, we did a good thing. The orc army that attacked you was able to escape. What was left of it, they headed south. Unfortunately, I can't send anyone after them until the damage to the wall is repaired. The commander looks at you with a disgruntled expression. It suddenly seems clear to him who he has standing in front of him. If you're interested, you could try and wipe out the mob that got away and collect the bounty. Killing pig noses and getting paid for it? Where's the hedge? You grin at Boindil and then turn back to the commander. We'll see what we can do. We must press on. Farewell, Commander Valor. Kill as many orcs as you can, dwarves. Palandia will be with you. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. So we gotta go after this orc horde? Simpleton was able to repel an orc attack. The commander asked you to wipe out the rest of the orcs south of the city. Okay. So what is this? Why would I need to go there? This is where we're turning in the quest, right? Hmm. You see a camp with a wagon and two people on the edge of the path. Behind them, Black Saddle towers up above a thick, dark forest, about a half a day's journey away. Speak to the humans? You don't want to give them a shock, so you address them while you're still a distance away. Hello, friends. Is there any space by your fire? The two traders look up and visibly jump when they see you three dwarves. Ah, hello. Ah, uh -huh. yes, of course. It doesn't escape your attention that you seem to be causing the traders some uneasiness. But you take up their offer and sit down. The twins follow your example. We're only travellers. We're looking for someone who's said to live on Black Saddle. A hermit. Someone who lives here? The traders exchange amazed looks. If they live here, they must be mad. Normally we wouldn't stop and rest here, but the horses are too exhausted. Our departure from Perista was delayed and we must have driven them too hard. 
Okay. Why does Black Saddle make you feel uneasy? It doesn't look particularly inviting, but it's only a mountain. Only a mountain? You don't know the legend. The trader looks at you and the twins for affirmation, but you all shake your heads. Black Saddle was once known as Cloud Piercer, and it towered up into the heavens, the upper slopes of pure gold and the summit covered in snow. The humans wanted to attain this wealth, but the smooth slopes and the dazzling summit made the climb impossible. They called on the dwarves to help them. They were able to tunnel up through Cloud Piercer to the top. They hollowed it out and carried away the gold. The humans demanded that the treasure be shared, but the dwarves refused, and as they argued, the mountain began to tremble. There were too many holes inside for it to hold together. It collapsed and buried both greedy parties underneath it. The mountain lost its tremendous size and its beauty, and ever since has haunted both humans and dwarves with its erosive hatred, causing even the rocks to turn black over time. <laughs> Never heard of it. Sounds like human tittle-tattle. Dwarves would never hollow out a mountain so much that it collapses. Hmm. You come from Parista? How are things there? No news to speak of, I'd say. Well, except for Nudin the Knowledge Lusty. I'm sorry. You know Nudin the Knowledge Lusty. Lot Yonan introduced him to you many years ago during a visit. What about him? Oh, nothing really. Just rumours. You nod at the trader to continue. He's behaving strangely and disappears into his tower for days on end. Merely looks ill, apparently. Well, that's what someone I know said. Perhaps he got a spell wrong. Sure. Hey, yes. What do you have for sale? You have food. Um... Wow, that's it? 73 would only cost us 146? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, we'll buy 40? Later in the night, after eating together and some friendly conversation by the campfire, you all decide to sleep. But you take the first watch. It's a night in which nothing happens, and the next morning the traders set off early. After breakfast, you also continue on your journey. So how many did that give us? So we have minus three a day. Yeah, we're good for a while, I would say. After a march through the thick pine forest, Black Saddle, the sinister tabletop mountain, and your journey's destination rises up before you. Not exactly sure what all those numbers on the map mean, but it does seem like they're counting down. Like, I thought maybe for the ore cord it has 17 turns until it disappears from the map, but then that wouldn't make sense for the other numbers on the map, like that's over the town that we visited, that was at 4 and now it's at 3. At, or was that 9? I can't remember. Are you sure that the Famulus lives here? Yes, according to Lot Yonan. Although you try to put a lot of assurance into your voice, you too see no signs that anyone lives here. No castle, no tunnel, no camp. There's nothing here but mountain. Then we'll have to take a closer look. You do that, scholar. We'll be waiting for you here. You think about objecting, but it would just be a waste of breath. All right, yeah, just lay down. That's cool. I'm gonna go, or maybe we'll talk to you. Found anything? A hidden camp? A secret doorway? Gold? No. Not yet. Okay. Well. Hmm. No trace of Goren here, either. 
If he's close, then there must be some kind of cave somewhere in the mountain. I can only climb a little way here. Oh, there must be a better way. Okay. An old tree. Looks like it could fall down at any moment. Oh, but we can actually use that one now. Okay, let's do it. There we go. That doesn't seem like it would be too stable, especially under the weight of a dwarf. But hey, it works. Too steep. I can't get a grip anywhere. I should be able to get up here. That was close. Did we just try again? I hope this is all worth it. Pretty good climber. Definitely a rock face. Hmm. Here's a... No, forget it. Here's a what? There's something engraved on it. You realize with surprise that they are runes in the Dwarven language. Speak friend and enter. Hmm. Built with the blood of our enemies, be unyielding as the rock and soak the land in their blood. Huh? Well, all right. I didn't move in, um, it just automatically moved hello. in. Hello. Master Garen. Lot Yonan sent me to bring some items back to you. Again, he's just kind of moving on his own here. My inquiries are almost at an end. That means I can finally go to be with my sunshine. I have never been to Greenglade, but I think I will like it there. I deposited my most valuable things in the grave of Horengarth before my departure and secured it with magic. The password is... You recognize the following words as rune names, but they're written in the learned language, so you don't know which they are. <sighs> Greenglade. Oh, great. So now you have to go to some place called Green Glade. North to the village of Green Glade on the account of love. Ah. Oh, wait, hold on. Useful. An eternal flame. I know who taught him that. You see sketches and notes on the architectural features, statues, and wall reliefs. It seems Garen spent a lot of time studying this place. Maybe he's a kind of a, a dwarf historian, or maybe he's just a treasure hunter. Maybe. Uh. Hello? Is anyone there? That's fine. It's just creepy voices. Listen, that's okay. That's fine. Light the campfire. Don't don't worry about it. It looks as though Garen lived in the fortress for a while. It also seems that he left several lunar orbits ago. Sure. It's not stealing. It would just be a shame if the provisions went off.
A series of weapons that are all clearly of dwarven origin. The spider webs and rust suggest they have been here for quite a while, maybe even centuries. So not usable. You have difficulty deciphering the scroll. Hmm. Throw the firstlings in the forge. Beat the secondlings to a pulp. The fourthlings are. I. The the rest is illegible. That looks like a lot of something. Oh. Thirdlings, the fortress belongs, it belongs to the dwarf haters. The thirdlings are dwarf haters? That's a pretty cool wall. I gotta say. Okay, that's a lot of stuff back there. Lorimba's dwarves are not only as unyielding as a mountain, they are also as destructive as an avalanche, and would batter into lesser kingdoms just as relentlessly. The four should find no salvation in Vracus, only eternal damnation, so that they suffer indescribable torment between the worlds. You have heard of the dwarf haters, but this is the first time you have read their hateful words. You feel sick and turn away. Hmm. Born of stone, forged in battle. Arise, reborn from the blood of the enemy. You're not sure if you really want to know what was once in this basin. The whole place gives you the feeling that a decent dwarf shouldn't hang around too long. Yeah, but look at all this stuff. Oh. Is this like a light in the order? Sarcophagus. Perhaps I could open it. We light the runes in order and then... <laughs> Graves could be buried here. Bad people. Okay, maybe there's some clues in here somewhere. Let's walk up the stairs first. Because right now I don't see any clues as to what order we would light the ruins. Maybe you don't even have to light, light them in order. Maybe you just light them all and they open up. I don't know. That seems like a very light puzzle. Lorimba. The progenitor of the thirdlings. In most of the chronicles about the five dwarfen kingdoms, only very little is written about the thirdlings, and what is written is full of disgust. They are called traitors, or worse. So were these thirdlings part of the sect that opened the door back in the first episode? It would seem that even the thirdlings worship Vracus, but in all the other kingdoms his shrine would be the biggest not the statue of the kingdom's progenitor. A couple of gold coins are in the bowl in front of the shrine. I mean, it still is a statue of Rockus, so I would think make an offering. Do any harm? Ah, okay, got experience for it. But no clues. I guess maybe we. J well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are there any more banners? Because that looks like a possible rune. Hmm. Well, let's just see what happens. A rune. Clearly magical.
So this may be, I guess, the first one. Because that's stayed lit. Just gonna have to brute force this one then? There's only one other solution here. This may not even be a good thing. Like, what I'm doing here... What if it just, like, this thing rises up as, like, an undead dwarf? And murders me. That's it. And open sesame. Rent's most valuable belongings. Letters from his lover, a silk scarf that must have belonged to her, and a medallion. Oh. This, okay. I mean, do we take the medallion from this dude? I'm curious. We're a curious dwarf. Whoops, that somehow ended up in our pocket. I don't know how that got there. That's really weird. Man, just all kinds of things just end up in a pocket. Grants one extra action point every five seconds during battle. One extra action point, huh? Judging by the gold amount here, this is more important in this game. <laughs> Although I'm still kind of curious about the elixir, though. So I will use that. Alright, well, I think we're done here. Oh, hold on, hold on. That's just his notes, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that, that's kind of the game. Just so we don't have to climb down the tree again. That's pretty cool. Glad I did that. Hi, friends. So, Scholar, what are the results of your inquiries? There is an abandoned fortress in the mountain, and I think it belonged to the thirdlings. Boindil's eyes narrow. The blasted dwarf killers! A thirdling fortress! Here, in the middle of Girdleguard, we must let High King Gundrabur know about this. The fortress has been long abandoned by the looks of it. Anyway, I can't go to Ogre's death until I have completed my quest. Goren is in Greenglade. Huh. The High King, why do you want to bring me to him? <sighs> All right then. It's about the choice of the new High King. Gandagar, the King of the Fourthlings, is with his entourage in Ogre's death, and is supposed to ascend the throne. But our acting High King Gundrabur wants to prevent that from happening. He fears that Gandagar wishes to instigate a war against the Elves. Okay. But what have I got to do with that? Boindil is about to say something, but is silenced by a nudge in the side from his brother. High King Gundrabur will explain everything when the time comes. You look distrustfully from one twin to the other. Boindil has donned an innocent expression, and Boendal doesn't give you the impression that he has anything else to say on the matter. Fair enough. What does this King Gandagar have against the Elves? Dwarves and elves just don't get along. Brachus and Satalia made us that way. I know that, but, but going to war, for just that, after all this time? Well, there must be more behind it. They say that the King of the Fourthlings is full of hatred, and is a hothead in this matter. 
a thirdling fortress here in the heart of Girdlegard. That's that's strange, isn't it? And worrying. But they've always been wily. They move in the shadows and kill there too if they can. Do you know their story? I've read about it. Lorenber, their progenitor, rejected the name that Vrakas gave him, who in turn did not give him any special talents, so his kingdom studied war. It helps them defending the East, but it also meant they ended up confronting the other kingdoms. No dwarf would ever even think of injuring one of his kind, never mind killing them. But the dwarf killers are proud of it. When they were even more powerful, they wanted to become the rulers of all dwarves. They are... Envious of our skills. They haven't been heard of for a long time, but you can be sure there isn't a single dwarf alive who doesn't hate them. Whatever, your High King must wait. I have a quest to carry out in Greenland. <laughs> but Whatever. our quest is... Boindil raises a placatory hand and throws his rucksack onto his back in preparation. Let it be, dear brother. Look at him. He has made his decision, and you will not be able to change his stubborn dwarven mind. You can't help but smile. So onward to Greenglade, then. And maybe that orc party, I guess? Holy... Okay, that's... That is farther than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be, like, right here or something. That's going to take... What, like 12 days? Plus, I'm kind of curious what this is. I'm assuming that's just a quest that we can partake in. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you for watching. I will see you all next time. Take care.